Some things take a really long time. So if you've only been at it for two weeks, cut yourself some slack. I'm a trans voice teacher, and today I wanted to talk about trans-specific concerns to vocal hydration. When it comes to keeping your voice well hydrated, we've all been told, just drink enough water. But for some trans people and some people with certain medical conditions, this advice falls kind of short. A lot of trans feminine people are on the androgen blocker spironolactone, and this drug makes you pee so much. Contrary to popular belief, it is actually possible to drink too much water. If you're drinking constantly and peeing constantly, you can mess up the electrolyte balance in your blood. This can lead to symptoms like uh, fatigue, nausea, fast heart rate, or in extreme cases, even seizure. Also, people taking testosterone may experience excessive sweating, which can make you dehydrate faster, or they can experience water retention, which can cause bloating, puffiness, and in some cases, the, if the vocal folds are retaining water, they can lose their voice temporarily. So what can trans people do to hydrate our voices properly? properly? Stick around for part two to find out. I'm a gender affirming voice teacher, and this is part two of vocal hydration concerns for trans folks. If you're regularly dehydrated because of the side effects of HRT, I recommend drinking something high in electrolytes, uh, like a sports drink, or even better, coconut water, which has all the electrolytes and only a fraction of the sugar. You can also spot hydrate your vocal folds using what's called a steamer. So these are fancy gadgets that vaporize water as you inhale and you get all the benefits of water directly to the vocal folds and it doesn't make you go to the bathroom all the time. <laughs> If you don't have a steamer, you can boil water, pour it into a bowl, and wait until the temperature of the water has cooled a little bit, and then lean over the bowl with a towel over your head and inhale the steam. A few notes of caution, do not inhale actively boiling water as this can lead to burns. Also, don't add any essential oils to your water because some of them, like tea tree oil, can be very drying to the vocal folds. Lastly, sometimes when we think our voice is dehydrated, it's actually tired, so instead of trying to fix vocal discomfort by seeking a hydration solution, you may just need to rest those muscles by taking a break from speaking or getting some sleep. Like I also mentioned in the last video, some people on HRT may experience a loss of voice because of water retention in the vocal folds, so this has nothing to do with being dehydrated, it's just something you kind of have to wait out a little bit. Those are all my trans-specific voice hydration tips. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hey everyone, I just wanted to give a quick update on the e-course that I am creating called Trans Vocal Exploration. So if you don't know, if you're a trans person who has vocal dysphoria or you're seeking resources on how to alter your voice, this is the course for you. I'm very excited to announce that it is going to be launching on September first, 2021. So in one month approximately. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm going to be giving an early bird discount to people who are on my mailing list. So if you want to get on that mailing list, get that early bird discount, go to the link in my bio and fill out the form and I'll be emailing you. In the meantime, before the course starts, I would really love for you to comment and tell me what are your primary concerns with your voice? What are your biggest voice problems? Let me know. My job is to support you in your voice journey. So the answer to that question is actually really interesting and important to me. So please leave your comments and I will read every single one. Hi, I'm a trans voice teacher. And today I am refilming my video on the false folds because the last one that I posted, I mix up the words vestibular as in part of the vestibule and vestigial as in the tail on that guy from Shallow Hell. I was very embarrassed, so I had to take that down and redo it because that's very important that we get these words right. So what are the false folds? The false folds, otherwise known as the vestibular folds, are a set of vocal folds that are directly above your true vocal folds. The true vocal folds, as seen in this diagram, are the ones that vibrate when we phonate regularly for speech. Ah, uh, you can feel them when you place your hand on your larynx. Ah, uh, the vestibular folds, or the false folds, are these ones here on the diagram. These activate when we make a sound like a huff. <sighs> Some people use this sound when making uh, certain types of music, like screamo. Wah, wah, wah. You can also activate both your false folds and your true vocal folds at the same time. Ah. Let me know in the comments if you're able to feel the difference between your false folds and your true vocal folds. I'm a gender affirming voice teacher and today I wanted to try something a little bit different. It occurred to me that in most of my TikToks, I don't really give a lot of examples of what it can sound like to feminize or masculinize or neutralize your voice. So we're gonna play a little game. I want you to write a comment 
where you give me a sentence or something to say and tell me what kind of voice you want to hear it said in. And then I will reply and try to do my best to give you an example. So let me know what kind of masculine, feminine voices do you want to hear? Uh, do you want to hear bright resonance, dark resonance, thick vocal fold mass, thin vocal fold mass, high pitch, low pitch? Tell me what kind of combination of characteristics do you want to see performed and I will do my best to make that happen for you.